everyone, in today's video we are going to be talking about how to get better at math. Now before I get into the juicy details, I just want to say that this video is dedicated to Azmita Kaffel because she requested it. So there is always hope, hence why I'm making this video. Just right off the bat, I want to say that if you're interested in hearing genuinely legit, realistic tips from someone that yours truly and pardon my French, sucks at math, or sucked at math. This video is gonna be PG-13, I'm sorry. Basically, I was not good at math. I hated math. I'm still not comfortable looking at it, but I was in kind of like an advanced program, or whatever you want to call it, when I was in high school and in CGEP. So basically, not only did I have to pass my math courses, but I had to excel my math classes, aka get over 80% on all of them. If not, I would get kicked out of the program. So basically, these are my 10 tips that have helped me improve my grades in math significantly. So if you find yourself in the same situation as me, and if you are not a fan of math, like me, these are the tips and the tricks that help me out personally, and I'm really hoping they can help you out, because I know what it's like to be stuck on that freaking problem and you don't know the answer and you don't know how that kid that never does any problems in math is so good at math and you're just like there and doing all the practice problems and you still get 75%. You know, share my pain. Share my pain, people. The first word of advice I have for you is to understand that math is cumulative. So make sure you understand A before you get to B. Now the best thing, best example I can take up for you to understand this is Myself, I was never comfortable with um, fractions. I didn't like fractions, I didn't get fractions, and every time I saw a fraction, my mind would just go... What are we talking about? What's that? I... Can, 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 can I just go to my English class and do this later? Yeah, so that was me, basically. But because I made no effort to understand fractions, when I got to, oh, I don't know, trigonometry, well, guess who got confused and lost and I was just staring there and I'm like, what is all of this? It got even harder and I'm even more lost. So what I'm trying to say is that if in class at any point you do not understand something, clarify it before you move forward. Don't just forget about it and be like, you know what, we don't have any problems on this anyway. So, you know, I'm just going to put it on the side and it's okay. I'm good at the other stuff. Trust me, that thing that you don't understand over there is going to catch up to you. So ask questions to the teacher, ask someone to clarify it. Understand the basics before you move up out of experience because it's going to bite you in the end like a bit me and it hurts. You need a band-aid and not even a cute band-aid like a Hello Kitty band-aid, like a really nasty band-aid. So don't get bit. The second thing I want to tell you is that formulas are your compass. Keep them handy and make them stand out. So every time you see a formula or like a key thing that's underlined and in bold in the book, just don't leave it there. Or if the teacher mentions it in class briefly and you're taking notes, highlight it. Make it stand out because that's gonna guide you. Formulas are the only thing in math that you have to remember. So what I did um, to help myself out is I either put them on little cue cards or I made myself kind of like a cheat sheet. So it's just one piece of paper with every formula I ever learned or I will ever need for that class. Number three, two words about practice problems. Do them. I don't care if they were not assigned on homework if you learn something new in math, and in your book there are 25 practice problems, if you're struggling with math, guess what? That's what I did. I did every single problem I could find in that math book. And when I couldn't find any more problems in that math book, I went and got requested from the teacher old tests from previous math finals, and I did that as a practice. And if that wasn't enough and I still wasn't understanding it, I went online and looked for more math problems. Unfortunately, I know it sounds like hard work, but that's what I had to do because I had such a hard time with math. I really needed to practice a lot and often just to get how you do it. I'm going to touch on this topic in my next point, so I'm not going to say anything more, but basically practice is key in math. You have to do all the practice problems. Do all the practice problems, and I mean it. 
Number four, and this might sound a little bit strange, but if you do it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Don't try to solve problems in your head. Now, when I used to get my test or my math problem or something, I used to used to read the problem really quickly and then when I had to write things down I just stopped and I'm like okay this is what I have to do and then if I subtract that and then don't do that because I know you kinda are tempted to like prepare before you write but trust me write it all down write your entire thought process down it really helps to not do it in your mind, to actually see it on paper because you can catch your mistakes and you can catch what you're doing wrong. Whereas when you do it in your head, you just like kind of get a gist of it and then you just hurry and try to write everything down, but then the thought's gonna escape you and you're just gonna be confused. Number five, if it is at all possible, try to draw the problem. This technique is particularly good for calculus, trigonometry, geometry, even physics. So pretty much, or anything that has like a big problem attached to it or what I'm trying to say is what's an easy example a typical Romanian math problem is Ana are trei mere mănâncă două câte mai rămân if you're Romanian you understand but basically the typical problem math problem that I had to do in Romania as a little kid was Anna has three apples she eats two how many are left remember when you were a kid and you had to like physically draw the three apples and then like someone eating them and then you're like oh yeah one do that as a grown-up. When you can, or when you have to draw a triangle, or trigonometry, just, or even in statistics. I used to do it in stats, when you have to draw, you know, the little bivariate analysis, and oh, I don't even want to think about it. Again, it engages more senses, you're able to visualize the problem. Sometimes, that's how they trick you in math exams, is they make the question like a chunky paragraph, and then you try to find the relevant information, because sometimes they put irrelevant information in there just to mess you up a little bit so be smarter than the teacher and draw it out so you can actually see what from that big bulk of text you need to solve the problem my sixth point is something that I am a strong believer in and I'm gonna preach it a little bit so I hope you don't mind but my sixth tip is to learn and practice the different methods and the different approaches to a problem what I realized, I don't know if I'm right, correct me if I'm not, there's only, let's say, a handful of common known ways to solve a problem. I found that in math, there's like the formula, and then there's types of problems. It generally uses the same word, or they generally have the same look to them and there's always a known way or two three ways you can solve each type of problem so that's why I highly encourage you to practice as much as you can because you'll see as many types of questions as you as there are so for someone that isn't like really really at ease with math and I can't be I don't know personally I can be mathematically creative so I can creatively find a new way to solve a problem. To me, in my head, was I remember seeing this style, so I know how to solve it because I remember seeing it. But if you give me a new, like a problem I've never seen before and say, with everything you've learned, solve it, I'm like, I can't, I just, that's not me. Number seven, if you're blocked, ask for the process and not the answer. So how often has this happened to you? You're just like there at home, stuck doing my homework, and you just cannot get the answer right in on the problem C or whatever. You call your friends, I used to call my friend and be like, yo, what'd you get for C? Four? I got 285. You sure it's four? Okay, okay, I'll write four. So I just like erase my answer and just wrote four and I'm like, whatever, next question. Basically, what I'm trying to tell you here is that don't settle for a simple answer. That way you can compare to your process and see where you didn't get it right. Or at least if, you know, it's a last resource, at least you can literally memorize the process from head to toe. So in an exam, you'll know how to tackle that question. You just do this process and you'll get it right. And also in class, when the teacher, there are some teachers that just randomly is like, okay, this is the whole formula and the answer is four. Raise your hand, don't be shy, and say, can you 
explain how you got to that answer. Number eight, dissect the long problems and underline the short ones. I'm huge on being very active with what you read, especially if you're in an exam. So I highly recommend you do this. When you're reading a problem, if it's in a book, you can use a pencil and just underline it and then erase it. No one's gonna know, I won't tell. But basically, this helps really take the key info from that problem and you're gonna be able to solve the problem better. So, or what you can do, just when I say dissect the big problems, what I mean is that take it apart. If it's a huge paragraph and if you can't draw it, like I said in my previous point, take it apart. So take, I don't know, the circumference is this and this is the angle. Don't just leave it floating around in the big problem. Under it, when you come to solve it, just write circumference equal this, angle at, I don't know, 45 degrees. And that way you'll know all the info that you need is right there staring you in the face in your own handwriting so you just extracted that valuable info put it right there so then when you have to do the problem you have everything you need right there not just in a big floaty fantasy island type of paragraph you have it like stop 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 and then you can just take it and plug it in your formula and what do you know it solves by itself. Number nine I'm pretty sure I mentioned it in my previous points but definitely with Matt understand don't memorize so if you don't understand something ask ask for help ask for your best friend to do homework with you if they're better at math go seek a tutor if not physically online there's so many cool like tutoring sites where you can just literally skype with a person that's gonna help you do the math problem or like you can give in the math problem and the person corrects it I mean, YOLO, take the advantage of the internet if it's there, you know? Or ask the teacher for help, or ask, do extra problems. Just basically what I'm trying to say here is ask for help if you don't understand because it is very important that you do understand. And the last advice I have for you is, to me, one of the most important ones, especially when it comes to math, is cleanliness and organization. If you see, if I still, I don't think I have, but if you see my math tests for when I was in high school or in CGEP, or even when you see, I don't know, a chemistry, because they have equations too, right? It is the most beautiful notebook you will ever see. I was insanely clean with my math problems and with my chemistry and physics, because, I don't know, to me, the material is already a mess in my head and I find it difficult and kind of like gibberish sometimes. So I didn't want what I write or my reasoning to be all over the place. So when you solve a math problem, do it step by step, neatly, beautiful. Like, so it's, it's clear. It just emphasizes that it's clear in your head and also, I find that teachers often give you points for the process. Even if at the end, I don't know, you misplace like a virgül and then you ended up with a bigger number. But they see that your thought process is right, they will give you most of the marks. Because, I don't know, that's what my teachers did. So definitely keep it clean and organized. So with that being said, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And subscribe to me if you like what you see. I will definitely see you in my next video. Bye guys!